Hey guys, um, a clarification when it comes to increased intracranial pressure and clustering care. So this one is a very hard one to talk about and you probably won't like my answer at the end, which is it depends on what your professor says or um, you know whatever direction that they wanna go in with this because um, it definitely can be something that professors are split on based on their own experience. Um, so when I'm talking about this, if you, you need to, uh, to have some context, you need to have watched uh, my increased ICP or um, learning about what things increase ICP and just recognize the reason it's hard to find an answer for this is, is because how confusing brain perfusion is. Um, in that video, I talk about like how every little thing either helps or hurts ICP. So we talk about how I want the patient awake so I can assess their neurostatus. Um, but if they're agitated, it can raise their blood pressure, which can worsen their ICP. But if I give them sedation, it lowers their blood pressure, which can worsen their ICP. Um, it can also suppress their respirations, which can increase their CO2, which can worsen their ICP. So it's like some things like, but, I, but also at the end of the day, even though I want them to have a good ICP, if they're really agitated, they're not going to have it anyway. So it's like this really fine balancing act when it comes to sedation. Um, I, I, one of my biggest priorities for IC, an, an increased ICP patient is a patent airway or making sure that they can, um, they're not choking on their own secretions. However, if I suction them, it increases their ICP. But if I don't suction them and they don't get enough oxygenation, it increases their ICP. So you can see like what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is I'm not trying to confuse you more. I'm just trying to say that like uh, with an IC, a high ICP patient or someone who has increased ICP or intracranial pressure, it's a really fine balance. It's really hard to get in that middle where we're like sedating them enough, but not too much, <laughs> you know, if, if they even need to be sedated, that we're suctioning them enough, but not too much, that we're getting them enough oxygen, but not too much, that they're breathing fast enough, um, you know, and not too little, you know, like it's this back and forth, uh, this is back and forth battle. So when it comes to clustering care, you know, per the most recent textbook, um, this is like the Lewis 11th edition. When I say the most recent, it's not the most recent one that, that that's actually out, but the one that people listening to this video will uh, most likely be utilizing. I will check the new one because I'm using the new one in my class now um, to see if it's different. When it talks about clustering care, um, it specifically states to um, minimize interruptions and to um, uh, you know, uh, collaborate with other people to get tasks done. Um, and so that makes it seem like they're suggesting, because they don't specifically say it, but it it in uh, it kind of points towards clustering care is a good thing. Um, now, um, you know, on on that would make sense because you know if you're clustering your care together, you're um, you know you're getting all your stuff done at once, so that way there's this brief interruption where their ICP might go up and then it can go back down. Um, I've always heard in the past, do not cluster care. So let's talk about the argument on the other side. So, you know, there's this argument for clustering care, get everything done at once and, you know, et cetera, and then let them rest. Um, you know, it depends on the, it's really going to depend on the patient, but I've always been taught not to cluster care. So like when I take a patient, like let's say I have a neuro patient, if I'm going down and they're going to CAT scan, I'm going to, you know, it's already, I'm taking them out of the room. There's lots of not, lights, noises, that's a lot of stimulation. I have to to put them in a CT scanner, lay them flat, and laying them flat increases their ICP. And I have to move them from one bed to another, put them back on their bed, move them around, get them upstairs. And usually when I get back from CT with most patients, I do a bath on them, I change their sheets. But what I normally do is I do not cluster my care if I have a patient who's really struggling with their ICP. What I'll do is I will um, spread their care out. So that way they don't have any really sharp rises in their um, ICP. And when I've talked to other complex professors like, you know, we've definitely talked about, hey, maybe both answers are right. Um, you know, maybe there are times to cluster care because when you cluster care, um, it does allow you to have less awakenings and you can collaborate with others and get stuff done uh, without having a whole lot of awakenings. Um, whereas if you do not cluster care, then you're going to be waking them up a lot, which can increase their ICP, but it's going to be like little short bursts. So it's pretty much like, do you want one big burst of high ICP every so often, or do you want little small bursts of, um, and not even maybe a burst, little small like um, pushes of um, 
uh, high ICP. So it kind of just, um, if you're thinking of it like, do you want to, um, you know, like, do you want like a one big mountain to climb or do you want a small, a bunch of small hills to climb? So if you think of it in that way, um, so th there's not really necessarily a right answer here. Again, I'm going to defer to your beautiful, wonderful, amazing, or handsome, I don't know, at one point there might be some, um, you know, male teachers teaching complex or whatever, if some females like to be considered handsome. Um, so whatever they prefer to be referred to, um, if they, whatever your wonderful professors say um, is what I would say is I would just ask them this question, like, do we cluster care or do we not? Or look in your PowerPoints for this. Um, Cause again, you know, in my experience, it depends on the patient. Some patients I can cluster their care, get it done, no big deal. Um, and their ICP, it's staying pretty steady. Other patients, I'm having to spread that out because they can't handle all the back to back to back. Um, they need breaks in between because otherwise um, their ICP would be up um, severely where they could herniate or have a really serious issue. Um, so again, it might just depend on the patient and things like that. Um, overall, we just need to consider, again, it's like this fine tipping balance between um, taking like following interventions and doing things to care for them while not overdoing it. Um, everything's a very fine balance. So to sum it up, um, Per the textbook, it's suggesting clustering care is a good thing. Um, uh, you know, you might hear some professors say, do not cluster care. You might see my other videos, do not cluster care, but it's really just going to maybe depend on the patient, depending on their individual needs. And again, professor preference, because all of us have different experiences, work in different types of ICUs, have different experience around this, different physicians. And, um, you know, most of us take kind of our... Um, some of our worst scenarios to think of like, you know, like, oh yeah, like, you know, here's something to keep in mind because we always want to warn y'all, um, but it just, it really depends. Um, with most ICP patients, maybe clustering care works, but uh, um, increased ICP patients that is. Um, but, um, you know, again, I think it's a mixed bag. I don't think there's a right answer here, but I know that you all always want right answers. And I wish I could give you one here, but the best I could do is say that um, as a whole, um, Ask your professors, check your PowerPoints, and uh, know that there is not always a perfect science in nursing. It's a world of gray. If you like black and white, it's a hard life for you. So anyway, hope you all have a good day. See you later.